What an exciting few months it's been. As we near the end of our third program in London, we reflect on how much the insurtech landscape has shifted again and how this year the insurance industry has reached a point of convergence. Insurers are moving from surface experimentation to impact-driven collaboration with startups to achieve solutions for real business problems. Insurers are co-creating solutions that improve relationships with their customers, enhance their internal processes, and make insurance a more seamless and transparent experience. The startups in our 2018 cohort are the driving force behind this change. Their impact and success permeate cybersecurity, digital health, risk prediction, customer engagement, the sharing economy, and beyond. The last three months of acceleration have been rigorous. The startups have participated in specialist workshops and received business development coaching on everything from business model validation and value proposition design, to legal contracting and regulatory compliance, to fundraising and pitch training, to marketing and sales. This has all led to the point we are at today. These forward-thinking entrepreneurs are changing the way the world views insurance. At Startup Bootcamp, we help startups create thriving businesses. We do this by giving them the resources they require to make the connections they need. And we couldn't do this without the continued support and high levels of engagement from our global network of partners, mentors, and investors. As these companies adapt new business models and leverage emerging technology, InsureTech will continue to inspire and change the landscape of insurance. But don't just take our word for it. Hear a first-hand account from someone who has been through it all, from founding to exiting an InsureTech startup. Cool. What an amazing place this is. I mean, I've, I speak at conferences quite often, and I can honestly say I've, I, I haven't experienced the, the buzz that was downstairs uh, uh, at coffee and here in the audience today as well. It's just, just amazing. Um, I mean, it, it gives me so much pleasure to talk to so many incredible uh, people here today. And um, you're all unique. You have to realize that very few people in this world and very few people I meet has the, the guts, the vision, the mindset, the risk-taking, the ideas to actually set up a new business. And without people like us, that I have absolutely no doubt that you know, the world would come to a standstill, and particularly the insurance industry, which, okay, does move at quite a slow pace. But I really believe that in the next 10 years or so, there's going to be a major change. You know, we're going through this technological movement that gives so much more opportunity to everything that we do. So you should all congratulate yourself. Um, I'm sure everyone here is going to be really, really uh, successful, and I truly wish you all are. However, as you know, it's not easy. Uh, so, you know, what I wanted to try to say very quickly today, because I don't, I know that there's a packed agenda which looks amazing, is just to give you a, sort of a few tips from my past. And yeah, it's, it's not easy setting up your own business. You know, you have your highs and your lows, and sometimes days where you have a high, a low, a high, a low, and a high, a low. I think I've had three sequences of highs and lows in one day before, you know, and, you know, you just have to get through these things. And uh, sometimes it's tough, and sometimes it's lonely as well. So, you know, one of the great things about you all here and part of the um, startup boot camp is that Really, you've, you've got people here that you can speak to if you find difficulties. That never really happened a few years ago. You were pretty much on your own. So just, just remember that everyone here are like-minded people, and, and you should really sort of um, make use of that. So, um, short of box. 
Um, well, my days at Insured Box have come to an end. Um, and um, uh, I thought up the idea of Insured Box in 2008. Uh, and um, about creating an insurance company that lived and breathed telematics. So I do think it's still the only example of an insurance company in the world that only writes motor insurance business with a black box. However, um, right at the very beginning, I just wanted to you know, put a few sort of comments that when I started to talk in the industry about the idea of building an insurance company uh, with a black box. Um, these, these are the sorts of responses I got. And every one of these comments come from a senior executive within the insurance industry. <laughs> so um, as blunt as it will not work or you must be nuts, uh, where's the marketing budget? And this was just at the start of the evolution of aggregators as well, when, when that started to happen. So in fact, you didn't really need one. You need to carry out market research, another thing that was always thrown at me. But the trouble is with market research, when you try to explain a concept, a new idea that no one else has really done before, and try to explain that to a customer, let's say, oh, I'll put a black box in your car and I'll monitor every moment that you drive. I'll know everything about where, you know, where you're going to be. Do you think that's a good idea? Generally speaking, of course, they didn't. Um, no one wants a black box. No one wants to be monitored. That was thrown at me all of the time. It's too expensive. Uh, why, have you, why will you exceed when everyone else failed? And, um, and as, as I say, as blunt as I don't get it. But the thing is, when you've got a good idea and you really believe it yourself, you shouldn't listen to these people. Because as I said, everyone here is unique. We all have a different mindset to the general population to those within the insurance industry, generally speaking. We all have a different mindset. And like me, probably all of you, you don't accept these things. You just have to drive it through and prove people wrong. And, you know, I was always born a bit of a rebel, even from a small boy. And I loved proving people wrong. So, 800,000 policies sold later. Um, that's the latest sort of number from Insure the Box in the time that I was there. So I definitely proved everyone wrong. And of course, after a while, everyone tries to copy as well. But that's great, you know, because, you know, when people copy, you know you're on to the right thing. So, Really, what do you sort of learn from all of this? You have to believe in yourself. You have to think through your proposition, your idea, from start to finish. And that's my real first, uh, first tip for everyone. Don't just think about the early stages when you start off your businesses. Think through, start to finish. Think through all of the hurdles that will be in front of you. Invent things, in, invent these hurdles. And start to think of solutions before they've actually all happened. Think about distribution. Think about who your real customers are, what they really want. Think through what your next idea will be, even when you're working on your first one. And if you start to behave like that, it makes you more confident about what you do. And when you get these doubters come and try to railroad your ideas, it gives you that sort of power that says, well, I'm just going to carry on and do this. It gives you focus as well to what your ultimate goals are. And you should stick to them as well. So, 
as I said, uh, in short a box now, I've uh, sold all my remaining shares uh, uh, to the MSNAD group. Uh, and um, uh, rather than retire, because I couldn't think of anything worse than retirement, uh, what would you do? <laughs> uh, and um, uh, I was never born with any sort of practical skills, so I can't do any sort of decorating, gardening, or anything like that, and I'm a complete disaster. And I just love the business that we're in. I think the insurance industry is the best industry you know, in the world. Uh, and the UK is the best environment to try out new ideas as well. I've got no doubt about that. So telematics, you know, five years ago, everyone was saying this was going to take over motor insurance, and it hasn't happened. And I thought good and hard about what do you need to actually give it new life, give it new blood, and uh, what were the things that was actually holding it back. And it was all about the customer. So what Thinko is all about now is about empowering the customer. Black boxes in itself is not a very desirable consumer commodity. Customers do not buy black boxes. They will reluctantly have one because they're getting cheaper motor insurance. If you can turn that on its head and actually have a device, a piece of technology that gives the customer real value in its own right, then uh, you're onto something. And the way that technology is developing now, there is so many more things that are happening at fast pace. So I've come across this device which gives you telematics. It's got a high-definition camera, and the camera's got artificial intelligence behind it, so it can create ADAS, advanced driver assistance systems, seeing the car in front, measuring how close you are, how fast you're driving, to whether you're lane swapping, the sorts of technology that's got high-end Lexus, Mercedes, BMWs, and those sorts of things. And now we've built in intelligent voice as well, the technology that underpins Amazon Alexa. So you've got four powerful things all in one, which actually insurers would all love to have in order to manage risk, but also allows you to build services around the device that's empowered by the consumer, with their permissions for the data, of course, to almost monetize that data on the consumer behalf to negate the cost of the device in the first place. So what I'm intending to do, really, is to market B2C devices and then build the infrastructure that links into the insurance industry to get cheap motor insurance to provide customers with a better claims experience. Nothing's more frustrating than having an accident that's not your fault and you can't prove it. And you lose your no claims, you lose your excess, and you might be stranded to get the bus home or the train home in your hour of need. This sort of technology now can stream all of the video of, of the accident at the point of accident. It can, you can talk in car intelligently, and the device can talk to you to manage that accident as it happens. And you'll have all the evidence to prove that it wasn't your fault and get you just compensation. And even if you were at fault, you can trade that data with the insurance company to get you a better service. So you're not stranded at the point of accident, and you can get a hired car and all of those sorts of things. So by using the power of things like GDPR, etc., to say to customers, this is your data, and I will help you make use of that data, you can create much more new, powerful consumer products, and, and that's what I aim to do. So just very quickly, what we're doing is to um, have a device, and we're not wedded to that device at the moment. This is just happens to be the one that I've been working on for the last two years, and I think is best in market at the moment. But as we all know, technology changes. So um, we'll wait and see if things come up better. We're producing apps, modern apps on modern technology, all immediately responsive to your driving experience. We have new measures of scoring 
new measures of um, interest of gamification and all that sort of thing thrown in to, to make it interesting. And the architecture built on AWS with um, Amazon, Amazon Web Services. And that's actually moved on amazing in the last five years as well. So for a new startup like us now, it's taken all the pain out of IT. Amazon does all of that. So you can actually concentrate on building the services to the consumer. And as we all know, IT can often be one of the biggest hurdles. And this is the advantage of this sort of managed services that you get in the cloud with serverless uh, infrastructure now as well to make life much easier for new startups like us. But, of course, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. And this infrastructure that you have to build is quite complex. And you have to work with a lot of people in order to make this work. Unlike in Shorter Box, where we tried to do everything ourselves. And sometimes you get yourself in a bit of a mess. And sometimes you try to do things and reinvent the wheel, which otherwise other people could do. What I'm doing with Thinko now is working with partners. And I really do see that that's the way the future will go. Get the right partners who are a specialist in what they do to support your business model. So I'm working with repair networks. I've got to find different types of fitters for the device. Um, all sorts of things that I'm bringing together in order to sort of make this happen in a cost-effective way. Because you want to get the price down as low as possible if this is a consumer-priced uh, product. So that's really all I wanted to say about Thinko. Um, and, um, uh, and I just wanted to wrap up, really, with a couple more tips that I can uh, give you from my past. And um, uh, it's always important when you're in your early stages to generate some revenue. It keeps your investors happy, of course. But it sort of makes you feel more confident. It's a bit like getting your first pay packet when you start working for the very first time. And sometimes you've got to be a bit creative how you generate that revenue, because it might not be directly related to your core proposition. But it's always good to get some money in your pocket. It just helps that cash flow. And boy, managing cash flow, in my experience, can be treacherous to your business. You know, you want to worry about building your business. You don't want to be worrying about cash flow. But if you haven't got the money, that is a worry. <laughs> and um, I've been there before. Uh, so getting revenue in, in any form, is always good for your business. And I recommend that you try to do that. And the other one, I mean, it's an old cliche, I know. But only work with people that you get on with. And the trouble is, when you're doing something new, a lot of people don't like taking risk. But there will always be other people out there that really buy into what you're doing. And if they like your idea, they want to be part of it. They're the sort of people that I work with now. Everyone that I'm working with is bought into the Thinko model. And they will help you. As new startups, sometimes they might not even charge you the appropriate fees and, um, for their services because they see it as a long-term investment. And you can do deals with people and be quite businesslike and smart. But you can only do that with people that believe in you and you believe in them. And that's really, really important. And finally, and maybe some of the investors sitting here won't like this, uh, but do not be a slave to your business plan. Because the one thing you can be sure is that your business plan will be wrong. And it can be depressing sometimes. The important thing, 
The important thing is that you're making progress. You're going in the right direction. And go back to tip one, this, this long-term vision that you made right at the beginning with hurdle points. And make sure you're on target for the hurdles. It doesn't matter about the timing always, but make sure that you're always making progress in the right direction. That's what's important. And actually, investors, as long as they're seeing you going in the right direction, they will hang in there and support you. And that's, you know, and that's, and that's important. So really, um, I'd just like to say um, thanks uh, for having me here. And I think we've got an amazing afternoon now. And I'm certainly looking forward to hearing all the new ideas and, uh, and, and chatting to people as well. And of course, if anyone does want you know, to contact me for any reason, so uh, coffee or anything like that, uh, to talk about their business and some of the challenges. If you want to talk to someone who's been there, got the T-shirt, I think I must have faced everything in my life at some point. You know, I've had my own business since 1993. Uh, this is my third one now. Um, I've faced every single challenge that is humanly possible and put in front of you. So I'm absolutely happy to have a chat with anyone uh, if you want to speak to someone like me. Thank you very much. <clears throat>
that insurers are really eager on partnering with startups to co-create solutions. As a result, they're able to achieve improved customer relationships, enhance business processes, and seamless and transparent insurance experiences. I'm sure a number of you are curious how we arrived at this event today. We began our journey in June 2017 by scouting 4,000 startups. Over 1,000 startups applied to the program, and we had the privilege of engaging 320 startups through fast tracks, office hours, and video interviews. In December 2017, we invited 23 startups to encounter a grueling selection process. From that process, we selected 10 startups which were handpicked by our partners. And this is how we arrived at the event today, and you'll have the privilege in a few minutes to hear from each and every one of these startups. We are very proud of the contribution that we make to our startups. As you can see, we make quite a drastic investment. In total, 1,400 hours have been, con have been invested in each of our startups. That is 140 hours per startup. This investment enables them to build solutions that are actually relevant for the insurance industry. Demo Day 2018 merely marks a milestone in the lives of our startups. Although they have developed in leaps and bounds over the last 100 plus days, they still have a long journey ahead before they're able to meet their ultimate goals. They have needs that span over five areas. The first area is with respect to data. They also have needs in respect of insurance capacity, domain expertise, investment, and last but not least, partnerships. Although some of these needs may appear complex, they can all be tackled through simple engagement. I will leave it to the startups to elaborate on their specific needs during their pitches later. The good thing as well is, you are in a position to help, yes, you, not the person next to you, not the person behind you, and you can do so in three simple ways. Firstly, we ask you to pay your undivided attention to each of the startups as they deliver their presentations. Secondly, we invite you to visit all their startups at their booths during the networking session. And last but not least, if you establish a fit, we ask you to set up a follow-up engagement so you can explore potential use cases. Our collaborations continue to expand. This year, we're excited to highlight our partnership with Venture Clash. This collaboration is about Venture Clash, which runs a global $5 million competition. The competition is targeted at early stage startups that are developing solutions in digital health, fintech, insurtech, and IoT. We are really excited to be joined by Patrick and Jessica, who've come in all the way from Connecticut in the United States to host a lunch tomorrow at Rocket Space. So please join them if you are interested in learning a little bit more about the competition. And in order to find them, our team is on hand to support you. Our agenda today is split in two. During the first session, we'll welcome the first five startups to present. Thereafter, we'll have a brief break for tea and coffee. After the break, the remaining five startups will come join us on stage. 
And we'll close that session with Sabine coming up on stage to give us a sneak preview about the future of Startup Bootcamp in SureTech London. The second session will be a networking session. It commences at 5 and will close at 7. During this time, we invite you to mingle with each and every one of this, our startups to learn more about their businesses. They'll also be facilitating live demos, so don't miss out. We've also organized some drinks and nibbles, so it will really be a fun time of mingling and engaging with each other. The startups booths are located downstairs. If you need assistance in finding the booths or finding a particular startup, please reach out to any one of our team members who are wearing white t-shirts. And now, for the moment you've all been waiting for, I give you the 2018 Startup Bootcamp in SureTech London cohort.